Hi, we're going to be looking at steam-powered cycles, more specifically Rankian regenerative cycles. The problem statement we have is that we're given some sort of Rankian cycle with multiple open and closed feed water heaters, and they want us to determine the expression for the work of the turbine and the mass fractions Y1, Y2, and Y3. Our cycle starts off with our pump 1 going to a closed feed water heater. We'll call this closed feed water heater 1. It then goes into an open feed water heater. We'll call this open feed water heater 1. It then goes to pump 2, then to another closed feed water heater. We'll call this closed feed water heater 2. Then it's fed into the boiler goes through our first turbine. Steam is then extracted before going through our second turbine. And finally, steam is extracted again before going through our third turbine. And then our last extraction happens before going into our first, fourth turbine. And then water goes, or the steam goes through the condenser and back to the pump. Now, our first extraction here is going to go to our closed feed water heater 2, which is then going to pass through a valve and go into our open feed water heater 1. Our second extraction is going to our open feed water heater 1. And our third extraction goes into our closed feed water heater 1 here through a valve and into our condenser. If we call our point right before the boiler point 1, we can call this here point 2, point 3, point 4, point 5, point 6. We'll call our point right before our pump point 7, right after our pump point 8 right before our open feed water heater, point 9, right after our open feed water heater, point 10, and right after our second pump, we'll call this point 11. If we call our point over here, right after our second closed feed water heater, point A, we can call this point here, point B, right after our first closed feed water heater. Our flow is occurring in this direction. At this point, steam splits off. We can call this Y1. Steam splits off over here as well. We'll call this Y2. And steam is splitting off over here. We'll call this Y3. And then we go through our condenser. This steam is flowing as such. And this is flowing as such. I'll now attempt to try to draw the TS diagram. We're going to give ourselves a bit of space here. So we have five different pressure lines. And then we said we're starting with our first pump. We're going to some higher pressure over here, where steam is being extracted from our second extraction process. Then from here, we're going to go along our pressure, and then we're going to go to our highest pressure over here. Then we go through the boiler to a certain point, and then we isentropically come down all the way to the end because we have no reheat processes here. Steam is being extracted here. As such, we're going to this point here. This is where we go through our trap. And this is our first, our second, sorry, closed feed water heater. The steam that's being extracted here, so I'm just going to draw my points here. Steam that's being extracted here goes to this point here. 
in our open feed water heater. The steam that's being extracted here goes to our other closed feed water heater then through our trap and to some point over here. So we call this here point one. This will be point two, point three, point four, point five, point six. This will be point seven, point eight, point nine, or point, sorry, 10, and finally point 11. That'll make this A and this here B. Here we'll have Y1, Y2, Y3, and these are directions of flow. So going like this. And there we go. That's approximately what our TS diagram would look like for this system here. We're asked to find the work of this system. So the work of this system, or the work total, is equal to the work of the first turbine over here, plus the work of the second turbine, plus the work of the third turbine, and finally, the work of the fourth turbine. Now, what we can say is that the work of turbine one is equal to, at this point here, we have our total mass flow rate times the enthalpy at state 2 minus the enthalpy at state 3. The work of turbine 2 is going to be equal to our mass flow rate minus our mass fraction 1. So mass flow rate minus mass fraction 1 times the enthalpy at state 3 minus the enthalpy at state 4. The work of our third turbine is going to be equal to our mass flow rate minus our first fraction minus our second mass fraction times the enthalpy at state 4 minus the enthalpy at state 5. So our mass flow rate minus our mass fraction 1, which left at our first extraction, minus our mass fraction 2 times the enthalpy at state 4 minus the enthalpy at state 5. Finally. The work of turbine 4 is going to be equal to our mass flow rate minus our first fraction minus our second fraction minus our third fraction. So our mass flow rate minus mass fraction 1 minus mass fraction 2 minus mass fraction 3 times the enthalpy at state 5 minus the enthalpy at state 6. And we can say that our mass fraction 1 over our mass fraction is equal to y1. Our mass fraction 2 divided by our mass flow rate is equal to y2. And our mass fraction 3 divided by our mass flow rate is y3. So we can see that we end up with the work of turbine 1 is equal to H2 minus H3, the work of turbine 2 is equal to 1 minus Y1, H3 minus H4, the work of turbine 3 is equal to 1 minus Y1 minus Y2, H4 minus H5, and the work of turbine 4 is equal to 1 minus Y1 minus Y2 minus Y3, H5 minus H6. Finally, with this information, we can find the work total. We said work total would be equal to our mass flow rate times H2 minus H3 plus 1 minus Y1, H3 minus H4 plus 1 minus Y1 minus Y2 H4 minus H5 plus 1 minus Y1 minus Y2 minus Y3 H5 minus H6. Let's solve for our different mass fractions. In order to do that, we're going to start with our second closed feed water heater. Flowing in 
we have our first mass fraction here, and it's at 0.3, or it has the properties of 0.3. Flowing out, we have once again our mass fraction 1 with the properties of 0.A. Flowing into our closed feed water heater, all of our mass fractions have rejoined here, so we have our full mass flow rate with the properties of 0.11. Finally, flowing out over here, once again, our full, mass our full mass flow rate, sorry, with the properties of 0.1. So if we use the first law, we can say that the enthalpy of 0.3, mass fraction 1, plus the enthalpy of 0.11 times our full mass flow rate is equal to the enthalpy of 0.1 times our mass flow rate, plus the enthalpy of 0.A times our mass fraction 1. We said that mass fraction 1 over mass flow rate is equal to y1. And if you recall from our uh, TS diagram, we can also say that the enthalpy at A is equal to the enthalpy at 1. If we use a little bit of algebra here, we can isolate and say y1 is going to be equal to the enthalpy at 1 minus the enthalpy at 11 divided by the enthalpy at 3 minus the enthalpy at 1. And just to make it a little easier, we can say our mass flow rate times the enthalpy at 1 plus our mass fraction 1, the enthalpy at A, is equal to our mass flow rate, the enthalpy at 11, plus our mass fraction 1, the enthalpy at 3. From here, we go to here. Now let's take a look at the open feed water here. If we look at our open feed water heater, we have our mass fraction 2 flowing in here with the properties of 0.4. We have our full mass flow rate flowing out, and this has the properties of 0.10. Flowing in from our closed feed water heater 2, we have our mass fraction 1 with the properties of point A. And flowing in over here, we have our mass flow rate minus our mass fraction 1 minus our mass fraction 2. But we can see here that our mass fraction 3 has been put back into the condenser. So we have our mass flow rate minus mass fraction 1 minus mass fraction 2. And this point here will have the properties of 0.9. If we use our first law, we can write that m dot h10 is going to be equal to all of the energy flowing in. So mass fraction 1, HA, plus mass fraction 2, H4, plus M dot minus mass fraction 1, minus mass fraction 2, H9. If we use a little bit of, oh, sorry to mention, uh, we said mass fraction 1 over M dot is equal to Y1. Mass fraction 2 over m dot is equal to y2. So if we use a little bit of algebra here, we can say that y2 is going to be equal to h10 minus h9 minus y1 ha minus h9 divided by h4 minus h9. We're now ready to look at our last closed feed water heater, which we called closed feed water heater 1, in order to solve for our third mass fraction. So if we look at it, we have our closed feed water heater 1. And coming in here, we have our mass fraction 3. And this has the properties of 0.5. Flowing in here, we have our mass flow rate 
minus our mass fraction 2 minus our mass fraction 1. And we can see here that mass fraction 3 has been put back into it. So minus mass fraction 1 minus mass fraction 2. And this point here will have the properties of point 8 coming out over here. We have our mass fraction 3, and this has the properties of point B. And then flowing out over here, we have our mass flow rate minus our mass fraction 1 minus our mass fraction 2. And this point here will have the properties of point 9. If we use our first law, we say that the energy coming in is equal to the energy going out. So we get, I just need a bit of space over here, we get our mass flow rate minus our mass fraction 1 minus our mass fraction 2 times the enthalpy at point 9 plus our mass fraction 3 times the enthalpy at point B is going to be equal to our mass flow rate minus our mass fraction 1 minus our mass fraction 2 times the enthalpy at point 8 plus our mass fraction 3 times the enthalpy at point 5. We said that mass fraction 1 divided by mass flow rate is y1, mass fraction 2 divided by mass flow rate is y2, and mass fraction 3 divided by mass flow rate is y3. If we use a bit of algebra, we can find that y3 is going to be equal to 1 minus y1 minus y2 times h9 minus h8 divided by h5 minus hb.